Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Shannon Belmont, and this is a brief introduction to some of the basics about the course you're embarking on right now. Um, I have been faculty um, ENVS and teaching GIS since 2010 on the Logan campus. I'm currently the director of the Utah Geospatial Consortium and head up two of our GIS certificate programs with a third one in the works, which is very exciting. Um, I have a master's degree from the University of Minnesota in watershed sciences and a bachelor's um, in soil hydrology from the University of Washington. But before I went back to get my graduate degree, uh, I worked as a surf artist for about 10 years. I was able to support myself doing this, which is really rare, especially because I was living in Minnesota, which is uh, kind of a matrix sort of experience. But I feel really lucky that I was able to kind of have this, this kind of free lifestyle. And I think that the cross between art uh, and geospatial analysis is a really exciting one uh, when we get into how we communicate our results in cartography. Okay, so I don't know if you've heard anything about this class, but it is a lot of work. There's no question about it. Um, many years ago, uh, a student actually posted this on their website that they were uh, submitting their work to for the course, which gave us a lot to laugh about and also uh, moan about a little bit. Um, it is a lot of work, but I'm going to help you develop some really mad GIS skills. This semester, for the first time, um, I've changed up the curriculum a little bit to really focus on raster modeling. There are two incredible new tools in ArcGIS Pro that I'm going to expose you to, and uh, we're going to do some data mining and, and some um, other kind of new techniques. But um, I want you to develop the confidence um, that allows you to experiment and play and know that you can't break anything. Just do it. Um, mess it up and know where to find the reset resources so that when you do break something, you know how to fix it um, or backtrack. The good, the good habits I want you to um, establish are all about self-evaluation, um, evaluating the data that you're getting your hands on, evaluating your process, and evaluating your results, which is largely connected to understanding the limitations of spatial data. Um, no more submitting lengths of polylines precise to the nearest, you know, 100 millionth of a centimeter. That's absolutely absurd, and I want you to understand data and geospatial analysis to the point where you know that that's completely absurd and not do it anymore. And then finally, I just want to, you know, expose you to techniques that set you apart in the workplace. We can't cover everything. And, you know, this is a very GIS uh, specific course. We have Python courses. We have remote sensing courses. We have um, geospatial analysis in our courses. So we're very much going to stick with um, the industry standard of, um, you know, Esri's ArcGIS Pro. Um, but even there, it, I'm blown away every single day that I turn on ArcGIS Pro, how many tools there are that I've never seen before. Um, anyway, it, we can't do it all, um, but we're going to focus on uh, raster modeling pretty intensively this semester. Okay, so there are weekly GIS exercises, just like in the intro course. Um, the final weeks are devoted to an individual project that's just larger in scope than in the, uh, in the introductory class. It's about five weeks, um, so you should think about a typical lab exercise and then multiply it by five in order you know, to get a sense of the complexity that we're working for. Um, during the first 10 weeks, basically you're going to be concurrently working on developing a proposal for the final project getting your hands on the data that you need, and if you're really on the ball, actually getting started on the analysis for it. But those weekly assignments are gonna keep you busy. Um, for the face-to-face -face advanced class that I teach, I require students to build a website, a Google website. They're super easy and intuitive to build and use. Uh, it serves as a really powerful digital portfolio of your work. Um, I want to throw this out there as an option for you. I'm not going to require it. Um, but for those of you who want to have that web presence or maybe that link that you can put on your resume or CV, it's a really uh, great way to kind of multitask and get it done while you're building uh, your assignments each week. 
Okay, so um, like I said about the individual projects, start thinking about them right now. And you can approach it a couple different ways. Uh, you can obviously just be inspired by some kind of research question, or maybe you start the other way and go looking for free geospatial data um, and then let the data inspire your research question. Maybe it's a location that you're interested in, or take one of the lab assignments that we dig into and riff off one of those and kind of build it up in complexity or figure out a way to combine multiple lab assignments and multiple tools into a more complex analysis. Um, anyway, just, just some ideas for how to get started. Um, you may work with a colleague that's got a project going. Um, you may be a grad student who has their own research and you can just plug it in and you know, kind of develop something specific for our five week project. Uh, I've made some changes to grading and how I do the grading. Typically, um, I've made the assignments all worth 100 points, and I spend half my time, you know, dealing with the rubrics, and I'm not going to do that anymore because I spend the other half of my time providing individual feedback um, for you, and I find that that is a much more effective thing for me to spend my time doing because this is a competency-based course. You're here to learn skills that are required in the field of geospatial science. Um, I want you to learn how to demonstrate your proficiency. That's more important than uh, going after points. So I don't want yeah, to, you to feel like you need to kind of constrain what you do to fit the assignment the assignment has um, expectations. I want you to work through those, but really I want you to demonstrate proficiency and mastery to me. And that's gonna require work. So not only are you gonna have to work through the geospatial skills and the tasks, um, you're, I want you to just think about how you can own it. How can you demonstrate that you understand what's going on? Um, I also find that uh, my um, distribution of grades at the end of the semester is almost always the exact same. So I don't want anyone to worry about their final grade. If you have concerns, get in touch with me. We can do a mid-semester check. We can do it more often if you want. But basically, it's going to work like this. If you find, or sorry, if you uh, do the work, um, spend the time, get the assignments done, um, and everything's fabulous, you're gonna get a pass. It's just that simple. I want you to do the work. If you do the work in this class, you learn the skills and that's all that's really required. So everyone pretty much gets an A unless the work just isn't getting done. Um, and that's when we'll have to start talking about what the final grade might look like. I will be keeping track, but the majority of the assignments, don't worry about your grade, you're gonna get a pass. There are always a handful of assignments that come in each week that just catch my eye and make me go, wow, that's, that's amazing. I can't believe you spent the time to do that. Or, wow, that really is incredibly professional. So a handful of assignments, maybe just one or two each week, might end up with an honors level. But there's no difference in points, okay? It's just acknowledgement. If you turn in something that doesn't meet, you know, the majority of the exercise's goals, you may end up with a no credit. Um, but we'll talk about how to work around that. But I, having taught uh, this online advanced GIS class for years and years and years, this isn't going to be an issue. It's just a way for me to save time, you not to get hung up on, you know, 98 versus 97 on an assignment, which is dumb, um, and really just focus on demonstrating mastery. And it gives me more time to provide you individual feedback so you can improve your, your understanding and learning. Okay, and like I said, you will not be surprised by your final grade. At the end, I have to give you a letter grade. Um, and I wanna make sure you are comfortable with that process. This isn't um, meant to be anything but a time saver and to keep us focused on the things that really matter. Okay, <sighs> shifting gears, getting access to the software. Um, just so you know, you're all going to get access to ArcGIS Pro if you don't already have it at work or in your lab or wherever it is. Um, you probably already have it from the intro class, and as long as you're still, uh, you know, a tuition-paying member of USU, um, you still have access. So this may won't, maybe won't be an issue for almost everybody, but 
Um, just so you know, um, you'll have to join USU's ArcGIS online group. Um, I have the roster that I send to Jennifer Flukiger, who is our IT person who uh, initiates all the invitations uh, for you to join uh, so you can get access to Box and download the software. If you're new to this, you need to know that uh, ArcGIS Pro will not run on an Apple operating system. Um, if you have any questions about system requirements, if you're purchasing a new computer for the class, um, you can Google Esri System Requirements ArcGIS Pro, and there's a whole web page that I usually just print out and bring to Best Buy with me uh, and just say, here, this is what I need. Okay, and then, yeah, any other questions about installation are on Canvas under week one. And finally, there is no required reading um, and no required textbook, but both of these books are really great. Um, GIS Fundamentals is in its sixth, I think, edition now. It's cheap. It's really well written. It has nothing to do with Esri. It's just geospatial technologies and um, analyses in general. It's really easy to read um, and very complete. There is an online digital version available. Um, and there's chapters um, available online that are even free. Um, in particular, the one on coordinate systems is really good. Um, and then this one, Mastering ArcGIS by Maribeth Price is um, more of a workbook. It comes with a data disk um, and she kind of walks through different analyses and processes um, with data um, just to kind of show you workflows and then talks about why and how. Um, so completely different. It is really expensive. You can find it at a library. It's a great thing to check out if you're on USU campus um, in Logan. I've got a copy you can check out if you'd like. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, please get in touch. And I look forward to working with you this semester.